Today's topic is about NGOs, free accelerators, accelerators. What is their role? Why do we need them? What challenges do they face? And what can we learn from the subject matter experts? First of all, um, we should start by watching the video as we did last time. It is uh, about NGOs. So I hope you find it interesting and I hope the volume, volume is not too much, not too low. Hello and welcome back to Beyond Silicon Valley. I'm Michael Goldberg. In the previous lectures, we learned about the important role that government and donors can play in the formation of new high growth companies. In Cleveland, government and donors committed significant resources to back entrepreneurs, but leaders quickly realized that an organization was needed to appropriately and wisely deploy this investment into private companies. Modeled on a program called Innovation Works in Pittsburgh, Jumpstart was created in 2004 as a venture development nonprofit organization to support innovative startup companies by providing pre-seed funding, developing networks of angel investors, and making connections for follow-on funding with venture capital firms. Jumpstart also provides technical assistance and support to help entrepreneurs develop their business plans, connect to mentors, and attract the necessary talent to manage and grow their companies. But creating and staffing an intermediary organization with talented leaders from the private sector would take significant resources. To date, Jumpstart has received over $75 million in funds to deliver its programs. In this lecture, you will learn why Cleveland created an organization like Jumpstart to support entrepreneurship, how an intermediary organization measures success, and what challenges it faces. Laura Bennett, the founder of Embrace Pet Insurance, was the first entrepreneur to receive an investment from Jumpstart. What we do is we, do, we sell and we design, sell pet health insurance for cats and dogs across the United States. And the, our product covers the unexpected bills like uh, anything from an ear infection through to cancer treatments, which will, can be very, very expensive. Um, to un you know the usual stuff like um, regular vet visits and so on. We started off with two people with a business plan. We're now very close to 50 people. So when I first moved to Cleveland, which was back in uh, 2004, there was nothing, nothing here for entrepreneurs, or at least it was very minimal. Um, and in fact, was when we first spoke to Jumpstart, was literally they were first forming. We met in a coffee shop because they didn't have any offices. Um, and so the entrepreneurship environment has developed since, since then. Um, back then there were no angel funds, now there are at least, there's at least one. Um, there were no um, accelerators, those have only occurred in the last couple of years. So it was really um, forming at that time, uh, there, was, well, there was nothing. So over, over that time, over the last 10, 10 years, a lot has changed. While there were resources available from government and donor sources in Cleveland to support entrepreneurship, funders believed that it was necessary to create an intermediary not-for-profit organization. Jackie Acho and Dorothy Bonick were two leaders in Cleveland that advocated for the creation of Jumpstart. When you've got an economy that doesn't really have a market at the early stage and you're trying to create a market, um, when there's not a market, private money is not going to flow in, nor will private services and you know, the things that would need to support those kinds of businesses. Um, the government could try to directly invest, but they're not really well suited to do that. A lot of it was an experiment. And um, so we had to create intermediaries that were capable of innovating the way that the um, support and the money would flow to companies. So if you look at intermediary organizations, they're really the intermediaries between the research base or the idea generation base and the marketplace. And you put them in place because the market system isn't working. There's not a natural way for these ideas to get to market. So when you have lost the natural pathways for that, you put in an intervention, uh, an intermediary. And we did that for entrepreneurship, we did that for specific industries like biomedical or um, materials or even manufacturing because manufacturing was changing overnight in the midst of all of this. Since its founding in 2004, 
Jumpstart has evolved to respond to what it perceives as the needs of the local entrepreneurs and the demands of its funders, including the third frontier and philanthropic donors like the Fund for Our Economic Future. Ray Leach is Jumpstart CEO. So one of the things I think that's really neat and was very unusual 10 years ago, it's a little less unusual now, is that Jumpstart was created as a not-for-profit organization, an NGO, whose principal focus was leveraging kind of a venture capital expertise model, but doing it for economic development outcomes. So all of our activity from day one wasn't to maximize profits for the institution or even for our supporters. It was to create a wave of momentum and create acceleration around company formation and the ability of those companies to be able to attract capital. Anthony Hughes runs Jumpstart's mentoring program. You know, Northeast Ohio was a very vibrant uh, ecosystem um, in the early 1900s. Um, we unfortunately uh, took a real hit, in, you know, with globalization and the decline in manufacturing in North America, and so our ecosystem was um, fairly uh, barren. Now, the notion or, or the, the, the analogy that I think is most appropriate for a place like Northeast Ohio is this notion of an artificial reef. Uh, the ecosystem didn't really exist when, um, when we started to focus heavily on how to build an ecosystem or rebuild an ecosystem. And so in some capacity, uh, Jumpstart is part of is like an artificial reef. It's an artificial construct on which um, uh, an ecosystem can rebuild itself. In 10 years, Jumpstart has invested nearly $30 million directly into its 76 startup companies through its investment fund. Jumpstart provides funding at the seed capital stage when it is extremely critical for capital to be locally available. Jumpstart's fund is structured as what is known as an evergreen, which means any investment gains that it makes on its portfolio companies gets put back into the fund to be invested in new companies. So one of the philosophies that we have at Jumpstart that I think is true everywhere is you need a balance of both capital and technical assistance or mentoring and coaching. And one of the most important vehicles that Jumpstart was able to create in the early days is what we call our Evergreen Fund, which was ultimately has ended up being a pool of $30 million. About 60% of that has come from the state and uh, public sector entities, and 40% has come from private foundations and community leaders that enable us to take the dollars in as philanthropy and then with those dollars make very, very risk friendly and yet still high risk investments in entrepreneurs who've never raised capital before. Ray references Jumpstart's fund beginning to see some initial returns on its investments which occur when a company is sold or has an initial public offering. It has been difficult, not just in Cleveland, but worldwide for any early stage company to make an exit. And as a result, the returns for venture capital as an asset class over the past decade have been weak. Jumpstart is still waiting for a sizable exit from their portfolio. Jackie Acho serves on Jumpstart's board of directors. I think Jumpstart has to have exits to be a success, but I don't think it needs a Groupon like exit. In fact, I don't think that's the way economies are built. I think it's built on many more smaller exits and successes. And I think those are in the coming. You know, it's been seven years or so since it started, so it does take time for these things to um, mature. While exits are a key metric Jumpstart's funders use to measure their effectiveness, other measurements of success include the ability of Jumpstart's portfolio to raise capital, to generate revenue, and to create jobs. Cleveland's entrepreneurs have come to depend on Jumpstart for support during this challenging startup phase of their businesses. Without Jumpstart, there would be no embrace. We wouldn't be here today. We had uh, nothing to start with. We weren't, so my business partner, Alex Kruglik and I, we're not from around here. In fact, you might be able to tell we're not from around the US at all. And so we didn't have connections here. We'd never done pet insurance before and we were not even insurance brokers. We even had Jumpstart come to London to help negotiate our arrangement with Lloyds of London. So Lloyds of London was our first insurance partner. We're not an insurance company, we need an insurance partner. So Jumpstart, uh, Mark Smith, came with us to help, to help Lloyds see that it wasn't just two people with a business plan, that it was the whole of Northeast Ohio behind us. Wireless Environment's David Levine credits Jumpstart for pushing him to recruit a more dynamic board of directors. Besides the, the cash infusion which uh, Jumpstart provided to us and 
the um, kind of the credibility hit that it gave us, increasing credibility. We benefited from Jumpstart's ability to explain to us the, the various stages of, of forming and growing a company and the important milestones and, and uh, actions that needed to be taken. There are intermediary organizations like Jumpstart working in markets all over the world. Like Jumpstart, they are typically structured as non-governmental organizations. Let's take a look at a couple. Endeavor is an NGO focused on mentoring and accelerating the best high-impact entrepreneurs around the world. Gabriela Magnani is the Managing Director of Endeavor Argentina. Well, Endeavor Argentina has every single office in, in, in Endeavor Worldwide. We are, our focus is on um, searching and selecting entrepreneurs, high-impact entrepreneurs, and mentoring them after they have been selected in an international panel. That's basically the one single model that we have in every single country. Now, at, on top of that, we do a lot of uh, inspiring um, new entrepreneurship or creating the entrepreneurship culture. So we do some massive events in eight different provinces of the country. It's more like a TEDx dynamics where we have entrepreneurs, our, our role models, our Endeavor role models, mm -hmm. tell their story to many people so they get inspired and then we provide some additional technical support with classes or debates on a specific day subjects for entrepreneurs. The jobs at companies like Embrace Pet Insurance, Cardio Insight and Wireless Environment represent the type of employment that communities around the world are looking to create. Job growth at these companies is steady, but no company in Jumpstart's portfolio is yet employing thousands of people. The challenge for Jumpstart and many other intermediary organizations supporting entrepreneurship around the world is to convince governments and donors to continue with their funding over the long term so investments have a chance to bear fruit in terms of job creation and profit. As a result, Jumpstart is being asked by its funders to explore new ways to become self-sustainable, including consulting other communities on venture development and setting up a new for-profit investment fund. The other question that looms for intermediary organizations like Jumpstart is, when they have accomplished enough in support of entrepreneurship, do they still have a reason to exist? In our next lecture, we will look at the role that anchor institutions such as universities play in driving entrepreneurship in a community. See you next time. Um, I know, especially in Georgia, there is a mindset that NGOs are created especially for eating grants and doing nothing. So this is our what we are used to, at least most of our perspective, was, that's our stereotypes. But actually, we can see that NGOs can do some good as well. <laughs> um, NGOs are very important in the USA, especially in helping the um, startup ecosystem. Uh, as you saw in this example, they created a jumpstart that uh, was uh, uh, kind of in our terms that uh, acted like a half pre-accelerator, half seed accelerator, half seed funding kind of thing. Um, here uh, we have uh, Natalie Kenkadze, that is our first uh, speaker for today. But uh, so um, I think we, we should, sh yes, probably we and we should share this microphone. Um, I thought we could spice up today's lecture. Oh, so first of all, please, nobody close the door, because if you close it, it may be one time, and then we, can, we may not get out. So just uh, so let's keep an eye on that if you want to get out so, at some point in time. <laughs> we will. <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> great job. So uh, first of all, I want to ask Natalie what is um, social entrepreneurship that we have not touched yet, and how does it work, and what is, why is it created for, and what could does it do for us? Hello, everybody. I'm Natalie, as you already introduced me, uh, the founder of NGO International Center for Peace and Integration and the social enterprise generator 9.8. So the question, what is social enterprise? So let's start from the very basic. And I'll try to explain it's very, very simple words. It's a normal business, usual business, uh, which is different from normal business by having the social mission and not distributing the money, profit among the owners, among the funders, but using this money for the social mission of the organization. 
So for example, uh, our social enterprise generator uh, is a co-working space during the day and a social bar during the night. So it's a, if you enter at, after 7 o'clock, it's a normal use bar and it's generating profit. But why it's a social enterprise? Because our social mission is to support the development process of the young professionals. So uh, this, with this benefit profit uh, coming from the social bar, we are using for funding the co-working space and implementing different activities for the young people. Great. Um, so I, I think we will get used to sharing the micro microphone. <laughs> so first of all, uh, what I want to tell you is that, uh, as I saw on the last meetup, there were a lot of questions. And uh, I thought uh, that it would be more interesting if you could engage in the uh, presentation as well. So I, don't, I didn't want it to be static as the last time. So I have some uh, predefined questions, but uh, in the end, if you have some others, if I do not cover anything, please feel free to ask Natalie, okay? So um, how, did, how do you see NGO's role in um, uh, supporting uh, this uh, social uh, entrepreneurship we, we, I hope we understood. So where that, did the idea of um, founding this generator 9.8 come from? So what was your main motivation for that? Okay. Um, like three years ago, I started to do the trainings about sharing economy like alternative way of economy, social economy, if you have, have heard about this concept. So co-working space is one of the ways, one of the concepts from sharing economy. And after starting delivering trainings on this topic, I had to uh, go deeper in this. So I started to research about co-working concept. I did the research in different countries of, of Europe and did my master thesis also on this topic. And then after getting back in Georgia, um, there was no co-working space at all yet. It was around two years ago before CoSpot was uh, funded even. So um, with my team of NGO, we decided to do something similar. And the idea came from because there was a need on the market because we were using NGO and like us, there were many of us. And the rent price is quite high in Tbilisi and the NGOs who are dependent on the grants, uh, they can't rent the permanent office. So this was the big challenge in our reality. And it is the same for startups or for the freelancers. And that's why we decided, okay, let's do the co-working space. And it was a time when nobody knew about the idea. And when we were speaking with the people and asking them to join the team and start something together, it was not very easy. Because first you have to explain the concept, then make them interested why they should join us. So finally it took like a year, I guess to develop the business model, and the investors, of course, they are not interested in this. And the role of NGOs is exactly here. First, we tried different um, startup, um, not accelerators, but competitions, idea competitions. But also there um, is not long-term mentorship. It, it can be, there can be short advices from the mentors, but it's not permanent. So it doesn't help you a lot to develop the business model. So here comes, in my opinion, the role of the NGOs who are funded by some foundation and it's their obligation to support these kind of ideas and initiatives. And that's what we're going to do with Lasha very soon. We're developing the pre-accelerator, which is funded again by the Youth and, uh, Ch Children and Youth Development Fund by Ministry of Sports and Youth. So um, I guess uh, there were a lot of challenges especially access to capital is the num um, well for, in my opinion number one uh, painful area for every entrepreneur especially in georgia so can you share what was your um, challenges along the way and um, if you have any tips or solutions for us or shortcuts that you can share please uh, the biggest challenge as you already mentioned it's funding <laughs> initial funding especially um, why? Because the investors are not interested in it, because it's not benefiting big profit, especially social enterprise, it's not interesting for any investor. Then international funds, it's also less interesting because you're not tackling some life change, not life changing, but survival project, but it's like usual uh, co-working space or whatever, depends on the social enterprise, social mission. 
uh, but it's quite hard to get international funding if you have no proper background. And then the local funding for social enterprises, there are only two foundations as I know, a Europe Foundation and this uh, Children and Youth Development Fund for financing social enterprises. And the rest, at least I don't know and I'm quite into this field, and recently the Center of um, Social Enterprises, this is another NGO. So funding, it's a great, great challenge. And the second biggest challenge for me from my experience, it was the mentorship and pre-accelerator or accelerator programs. Like people, uh, when you are not in the field, you don't have connections at the beginning, to whom to go, to whom to ask for the help or for support and for advices. So I think pre-accelerator programs are very important in this case. Okay, so um, we can see that um, even in the video it was mentioned about um, before that um, how, they, how do you measure success? For them, uh, mainly it's IPO or merger, so you go, but uh, for Georgia it's not really a relevant topic because I, as I know only several big cor corporations have gone public. It was the Bank of Georgia, TBC Bank, and I think GPI or some, so very, very big um, organizations. So reality for us is not to, uh, so success, measure of success won't be going IPO for any of us in the near future. But uh, as Jumpstart so, uh, it's not the only measure of success. Another measure of success that may be very relevant to us and very important to our ecosystem is not only uh, um, having a lot of money, but also incorporating a lot of people. So uh, having a lot of employees uh, is one of the benefits of having a lot of startups. Uh, so uh, fighting this unemployment is very crucial for us as our rates are higher. So starting entrepreneurship and especially if you go into more social way, uh, there is a huge benefit for society and for not only startup ecosystem, but for uh, our country's ecosystem as a whole. As you mentioned, uh, the, one of the main challenges, uh, apart from funding, of course, was the mentorship and pre-accelerators. I want to, Lasha to join us about pre-accelerators and the accelerators and... The, okay, okay, because cord is not long enough. So Lasha, please introduce yourself and um, uh, can you tell us what is Blender, first of all, and what mission does it have? Okay. Uh, by the way, it's the first time when I'm talking, speaking in English in microphone. So, yay! <laughs> so, what's Blender? Um, actually, what we are trying to do, uh, we try to help accelerators to manage this accelerator process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unfortunately in Georgia, not uh, many people have some real experience how to develop startups and uh, how Accelerator just works. Uh, me and few my friends, we have some kind of um, experience, so we want to share this experience to different, um, ex for different accelerators. And, uh, for example, in Ilya State University, there's pre-accelerator, it's called uh, Zoom Out. Uh, and there's also different accelerators in different universities. Mm -hmm. And these accelerators need some um, kind of management, uh, help for startup teams and etc. etc. And exactly Zoom Out tried to do this job. Okay. okay. Um, can you tell us what is the difference between pre-accelerator and seed, ac uh, seed accelerator? Okay. I, I know that you were in Dubai in seed accelerator, so okay. what's the difference between them and uh, where, uh, where should I go if uh, I'm on the, I just have an idea and I know that it will change the world. Okay. Where should I start? Which should I see? Okay, uh, let's start with accelerators. Uh, in accelerator you already have some team and strong idea, you already know what is your startup model mm -hmm. and what is your idea and uh, probably you have some MVP, meaning viable product, uh, right. so you have some prototype. Uh, in case of pre-accelerator, you maybe have no team mm -hmm. or maybe you have idea but you are not sure is this uh, idea valid or not. And so it's not MVP yet. It's, it's really, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's really, really early stage of startup, mm -hmm. and you try to develop team, uh, finalize idea, and develop some MVP, and you are ready to go to accelerator because it's not easy to uh, find some cool accelerator right. and get some. Uh, uh, money from them mm -hmm. and you should know how to pitch your idea and how to prepare your uh, start a pitch deck for uh, accelerators also mm -hmm. so you need some kind of uh, preparation um, for accelerators and that's exactly what pre-accelerator okay and what does seed accelerators do and when do we need it okay um, now we have a team from we my have perspective, MVP. there is very blur. Uh, there is no strong line between a pre-accelerator and a seed accelerator. Mm -hmm. But in general, uh, in case of seed accelerators, there is some um, very small amount of money, and you can use and um, you can really fast generate uh, or develop your prototype. MVP prototype. Yeah, yeah. exactly. In case of pre-acceleration, it's most about uh, mentorship. mentorship, it's uh, like master, master classes and etc. Okay, so yeah. it's, there is more like polishing your ideas mm -hmm. in pre-accelerators and probably finding a team. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and in seed accelerators, it's about getting seed money mm -hmm. and taking your idea to the next level, the that next is level. getting prototype, yeah. having this MVP prototype uh, and then hopefully seed accelerators help you go to the uh, investors? Sure. Uh, most of accelerators have some uh, uh, loops, time loops, and uh, after uh, mm -hmm. and every time loop there is demo day. And in demo day you have opportunity to meet uh, some mentors and pitch your idea, and that's a great opportunity to level up your startup. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, so, why is there a need? So we know that there are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and then there is government, right? Okay. Why do you think that there is a need for this acceleration? Uh, so why shouldn't government do it and why should it be done privately? Okay, let's, uh, I'll try to generalize uh, your question. Uh, I, I think uh, startup ecosystem and bureaucracy is um, absolutely different. Mm -hmm. uh, ecosystems. So right. startups uh, need some fast movement, um, quick decisions, and etc. Piloting, and, piloting yeah. and you, you should be very agile, and etc. Government is not so fast and mm -hmm. so smart, and they cannot. Uh, yes, sometimes <laughs> uh, they cannot move so fast as startup uh, should, and. Uh, same in case of university, why right? university cannot manage these mm -hmm. accelerators and pre-accelerators? Because universities mostly uh, have some bureaucracy also. Yeah. Big, big organization, it's not small and you can, cannot uh, move so fast as startup uh, world needs. Right. And uh, that's why we need some small uh, or non-governmental organizations uh, to uh, accelerate this process, uh, the startup ecosystem in general. And I would add that mostly, expert, as, as it was the case in the Cleveland, Ohio, mostly experts in the private sector do not want to go to government because they have a lot of expertise and they don't want to uh, kind of lose it in bureaucracy. They want to remain uh, neutral from government, but they still want to contribute to the society. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of where uh, this is kind of your place, either NGO or pre-accelerator or seed accelerator. And um, what was challenges when creating Zoom Out pre-accelerator, for example, in Georgia? The main challenges, and mm -hmm. if you have any solutions that how you are working with that, uh, or what experience can you share with us? Okay. Uh, answer is saying uh, time by time uh, we have some master classes for entrepreneurs and uh, one time I remember some, some, some guy asked me uh, what's different between international uh, investors and Georgian investors and my answer was that uh, difference, general difference is that uh, Georgian investors doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> one is mythical and yeah, one is real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Information and resources is very real. And Georgian is very theoretical and resources, is very theoretical and resources in Georgia are not real. Because no, no one wants to invest in um, high risk um, organization uh, such as startups, because there is, you know, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of risk. risk. And that's the biggest challenge, because it's always hard to find any investment for, uh, for startups, for hackathons, for right. environment, for anything, yes. So I think the first meetup will be the most interesting, the access to capital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will be kind of culmination yeah. to that. But the uh, idea of Zoom Out was that uh, there is a lot of accelerators, uh, not in Georgia, around mm -hmm. Georgia, around yes. the world. Yes. And there are some standards how you should pitch your idea, how you right. should be prepared, your financials, your prototype, etc. Mm -hmm. And the uh, idea is exactly to prepare teams for international accelerators, not for Georgian um, investors. But okay. anyway, um, without money, it's anyway hard okay. to get. Okay. Yeah, so money is the number one challenge yeah. for in every direction. Yeah. But was there any any big challenge that you uh, experienced firsthand or? Uh, okay, um, bureaucracy is the problem, definitely. Uh, how can we? Um, Definitely, that's a problem. You know what? Uh, we have no culture of startup. Uh, right, uh, in the creation yeah. of. Yeah, we don't think as a startups in general, I mean. Uh, we don't know what's a lean startup uh, methodology. I mean, we don't know, as not, not as a entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, as a, a top level management of some organizations, for example. Because if you are developing some startups, you need partners, you need uh, some networking, some connections, and in general, we handle this culture in Georgia, how the startup works, and it, or and etc. So it's a challenge. It's uh, not easy to explain why your prototype is body product and okay. why you handle uh, some prototype with a lot of futures and and etc. And why you ha have no logout in mm -hmm. your mobile application? It's this problem. So, uh, is there a way that you overcame this? Like, is it a shareable way, or it was very specific to you that only pre-accelerators, seed accelerators, experience? Um, so, I how can we use your experience uh, as? Uh, I'm not sure uh, if I have for today some. Uh, real experience um, or not, I'm not sure, because uh, okay. uh, there's a lot of to do uh, and we are still in learning process and I don't know, to be honest, uh, and I don't know what to share and what not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, it's cool that we have uh, already have some pure pre-accelerators we have a uh, generator 9.8 uh, and also we have great place uh, such as Tech Park and uh, there's places, <laughs> there is no uh, experienced uh, people unfortunately uh, to share, there, there, there is few just, but we need more, we need mentors and etc and of course we need some uh, investors and I think mostly we need some success story. Uh, we need one successful startup from Georgia in Silicon Valley with a uh, few million at least <laughs> US dollars. At least, <laughs> yeah. And that, that will be great start for uh, for anybody. Uh, so I know this this will be off topic, mm -hmm. but um, uh, can you share your experience? about Tripex, okay. and uh, what steps did you go, mm -hmm. and how much did you, did you achieve the success that you are at right now? Okay, uh, I already spent all my English words, but <laughs> anyway, I'll try, to <laughs> <Be you. laughs> I'll try to do my best. Okay. Because probably we can relate more to that than three accelerators. Okay, uh, I have few startups, uh, Tripex, 
Uh, we have uh, shared startup Rebo, and I, I had one more startup called String. Uh, and what's the most important, I failed one more startup in Dubai. Right. And that was my first fail. And uh, that was the biggest experience uh, in my startup life. Um, Okay, what does Triplex uh, do is that we are planting trees uh, through mobile application. We have unique QR codes and these QR codes are related uh, with different products. And if you as a user scan this QR code, mm -hmm. one tree will be planted on your name uh, somewhere cool. in Georgia. So it's a startup. It's um, mostly a startup, yes. It's that includes social responsibility and it's um, absolutely like a startup. But um, what was interesting, I used my previous experience, experiences my, from my previous startups and we um, developed really, really minimal uh, viable product. Uh, so our mobile application, which is for uh, iOS and Android, it's, there's really one uh, major function. Just you can scan QR code and that's all. We oh, have no logout link yet. No. You cannot repair your password and you cannot uh, log in with uh, Facebook or Twitter or uh, Google. Uh, Nothing. Yeah. Just you, you can just scan your QR, QR okay. code and but this it function, enough? yeah, it, it was enough to plant uh, 800 uh, trees uh, during two months. We launched not to, to stream, uh, ma we launched in uh, March, uh, as I remember, uh, and yeah. We and where is your startup wanted. now with? So, uh, one week ago, uh, we won um, seat, seat forum uh, at PDC, mm -hmm. and now we have opportunity to go uh, in New York City and pitch our idea to uh, to investors to be crowd of investors in the US in New York and uh, we are going to use this opportunity and we have now negotiations with book publishers because we think that uh, this niche is our primary niche uh, so we want to attach our QR codes uh, to books because in case of uh, paper books uh, three are used to prepare this book. Right. I'm sorry, what's the concept of the winning project? Uh, just is interesting. it connected to the previous one you just explained it? Sorry, what? Mm -hmm. Is this connected to the previous project you just explained What? What, what is connected? The winning project to which ah. you're presenting as a US. It's three packs. Oh, if question is how we... Uh, Now, what Tripex uh, do for today? Go go up. I think you are it. Ah, okay. So. Uh, oh. It's a uh, not, not <laughs> tolerator pitch. It's a pitch. Uh, so it's, she's asking almost yeah, yeah. tolerator pitch. Okay, okay, I, I clearly understand that. Um, for that, we first need some cool presentation pitch. Yeah. This is the most important part of startups, uh, uh, especially in early stage, I think, because it's not only for investors. You need some team members, you need to share your idea with. Uh, um, I don't know, with different organizations, with partners, and etc., etc. So pitching is the most important part, and by the way, uh, after a few days, uh, we have, we'll, um, we'll have a master class about how to pitch your idea in Technopark, so you can join us. Uh, and what's the main con concept of Tripex? It's just a green loyalty program, so you can buy any uh, item with Tripex QR. Hello, George. Ardaketo. <laughs> so, 
So it's green layout program. You can share QR codes or, uh, which are rela related to its different products and three will be planted on your name because we know your name uh, by, QR code. by QR code and through application uh, and later on you will receive... Uh, Do you have to pay one dollar or pay three guys? <laughs> <laughs> you know where your tree is planted, you know, you know ge geolocations, and you have a picture of your uh, own tree. Yeah. So, have successes. Thank you very much. So, um, let me sum up what we just uh, said, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So, social NGO's role today in Georgia's entrepreneurship ecosystem is more directed towards social entrepreneurship. It's not very active towards regular, like normal, what investors are looking entrepreneurship, not yet at least. So we haven't created nothing like Jumpstart, but we're getting there, first of all. And uh, for any startup who is just really starting or is on any level and still is called startup and has not got seed, ex uh, seed capital yet, it's very important for them to go uh, to pre-accelerator or seed accelerator to take their <coughs> startup to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did I? Yeah. So hopefully Zoom Out will have uh, connections to international seed accelerators and after finishing these pre-accelerators, when the distinct uh, teams will then uh, go on internationally, mm -hmm. it may probably in Dubai, probably in Europe, and go on seed accelerators and then take that stage, that idea to the even next stage and hopefully get uh, seed funding or Series A funding even better. So that was uh, when the startup and the entrepreneurship is very new uh, in country, NGOs and pre-accelerators will be even, even newer. So there is not a lot to say, not a lot to, that has been done in this field. But um, it, it has to be there. It, it's very crucial. If it was crucial for USA, you can imagine that it can be very important for us as well. So please, if you have any questions uh, regarding either social NGOs or pre-accelerators, please feel free to ask. So we have to go one by one and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, like, let's start from left and go to right. So my question about accelerators is, like, if someone comes with an idea, you also help with, like, a project proposal or something, like, I have an idea and I want to, like, make it a document kind of thing. Like, is it possible to tell someone, like, Even business plan. Okay. Uh, First of all, it depends. It's not different. But from my personal uh, perspective, I'm looking for uh, perspective people, not just ideas or teams. Uh, for me personally, uh, as for manager uh, of accelerators, it's most important to uh, find some interesting people, not ideas, because you anytime can change or pilot as we standardize. Uh, yeah. Say uh, your idea, and it's not difficult when you are a startup. You can easily change your way, your business model, etc. But uh, you cannot change people. So, uh, so I think yes, but uh, it depends if you are a really interesting person, yeah. person. Because I know that in startup industry, investors are more looking uh, for, teams. for teams, not really the. So it's better to have a mediocre idea and really good team than. The best idea and right. But in the case of Blender, we are trying to uh, connect uh, right people. Because in some cases, uh, some guys have uh, great business uh, uh, knowledge and experience. They, they know how to calculate financials, how to pitch idea, and etc. But unfortunately, they have no uh, technical uh, guys. But some universities have uh, great technical uh, members and teams and they have no business guy. Uh, that's why we are outsourced company and we are trying to connect different uh, accelerators and different organizations and different people uh, in, in Tbilisi for today, but hopefully, hopefully regions later. later yeah. exactly.
Okay, as I understand, we are going to organize this Brexit electoral program, and I'm interested, like, where can we find the application package? And Sorry, what? Find what? Application package? Okay. Or when is the deadline, or when okay. is, like, timeline of the program? Okay, uh, in case of zoom out, you can find the application in uh, www.zoomout.g. Uh, it's open, and uh, for today, application is open. Uh, so you can uh, register in time. Uh, there's also different um, pre-accelerators, and we can share this information later through Facebook. Because uh, some of them are closed, uh, are not public, but also you can join uh, accelerator of 9.8. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the Children Youth Development Fund gave another second grant now to Generator and we are starting from next week already the new accelerator or pre-accelerator we have not defined yet. So he will be the manager and it will take place in Generator. So if you have some these kind of ideas, just an idea or team with a so-so idea, you can send your application. It will be from next week already online. You can check on Generator's web, not website, but Facebook page. <laughs> Yeah, probably you can share this uh, information on the closed page. Okay. Facebook, yep. and then they can go yep, we can. And it's for startups, for NGOs, and for social enterprises. It's not limited only to the business. And by the way, what about not pre All right. Um, it's, uh, first of all, hello, everybody. My name is George, and I represent the Innovation and Technology Agency uh, of Georgia, GITA. Yeah, uh, it's it's very nice to see so many familiar faces in, in the room. By the way, um, it's a very interesting topic: pre-accelerators, uh, incubators, accelerators. Uh, we have an, a, a business incubator in GITA uh, that's in Tech Park, the new building of the agency in uh, Okrohana, Golden Valley, as we like to call it. Uh, the business incubator is, is a one-year program and uh, its aim is to take the startups from the idea stage, from the business idea stage to a successful business stage. Uh, it means that, uh, well, during the one year we have four milestones that the members have to reach. Uh, in, in case of the, the first milestone is uh, prototyping, the second milestone is um, getting clients, getting customers. The third uh, milestone is to get a solid business plan and the fourth milestone is getting funded. Uh, and we help uh, the teams reach each of the milestones that uh, we, we give them. Uh, Management Academy helps us with that. Deloitte is our partner in providing legal and uh, financial consultancy. Uh, we have uh, Georgian Patent Office as you probably know it, that provides uh, a consultancy in uh, intellectual property. And the, the program is quite, uh, it, it's quite new. Uh, there has been only three months from the start of the first round. Uh, it's going quite good. The teams uh, of the first batch have already uh, finalized their prototypes and now they're working on client acquisition. Uh, it's a very interesting program. You can you can learn more about it uh, online, or uh, I can share my contact to everyone if you're interested. We c we can talk about it later. Thanks. So, uh, uh, sorry, you were first. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we are we are talking about uh, like some programs. And it's possible to send our. Uh, what project? For example, if I will send a project or something like that, uh, what is a priority for to choose? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope it's not like English language. <laughs> okay. Because it's no. It depends. It dep depends on the program, uh, actually. In in uh, business incubator of Gita, uh, it it doesn't matter really if you speak English or if, you're, if your idea is global or not. Uh, it even depends on the batch because for different batches we have different uh, priorities. 
uh, as I know in, in the pre-accelerators, well, actually I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Okay. Yeah. I started to learn English two years ago in Dubai, by the way. Uh, uh, Already in Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> and he skipped George yesterday. He went straight to Dubai. It wasn't so easy doing it, but you should improve your English as much as possible because uh, it's really hard to do anything today without English. Uh, but anyway, from my perspective, we uh, should try to build some international startups. Uh, personally, I, I, I don't want personally, as a mentor, I don't want to spend my time uh, for local startups, for local ideas. But, uh, for example, Tripex is a local startup for today, but it's not a local idea. Uh, it, so it has to be scalable. Yes, so absolutely. Are you? And um, I think it's an um, important part, uh, but I always mention that uh, team is the most important team. And, uh, but hopefully if your idea is great and your team is good, and by the time you go to the next level, that is getting seed funding, you can, have, you can either get someone who knows English, uh -huh. Or you can do like a lot of people go like In team, I mean um, some experience as professionals. Uh, if this team is uh, balanced, so there should be one business guy, one tech guy, and uh, it will be much better if there will be uh, one marketer, marketer. And also in team, I mean also passion, perseverance, and Lots of parameters uh, uh, that I cannot explain with world. You just listen to someone and know if uh, these uh, people or this guy uh, can build something great and big, and that's all. It just so not knowing it's English very well right now. Is, uh, I think it's no problem in Georgia. It's one of the challenges yeah. that you will have many. Yeah. Like it will be one of the many that you have to overcome. Exactly. Not knowing English is like not knowing business, or not knowing accounting, or not knowing marketing. Right. It's it's normal. Yeah. You're not born with all yeah, the knowledge, you know, right? Yeah, even if you know English, you won't know accounting, or if you know accounting, you won't know marketing, or you, you won't be one magic man that knows everything, right? You need a team, and uh, if, if you were a magic man, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and, and the good thing about you, uh, you personally, is that you you're sit here and you're, you're, you're speaking the language that you think you have problem with. And that's a very good, uh, that, that, it, that is an amazing thing, because that's exactly how you learn. If, if you're quiet and if you don't practice, it doesn't come that way. It's, and and it, it's the same about everything. If you think that you have no experience in, in language, if you think you have no experience in business, it doesn't matter, you should start and the experience will come. Right, so. Okay, you were. Yeah, I just have, I guess, a couple comments and maybe one question. First comment, uh, I'm just amazed by the, the English speaking level here, uh, that you guys could have such a, a stimulating and interesting conversation in second language. It's really humbling because I know I can't certainly get anywhere close to that version. Uh, another comment is, uh, so, <clears throat> so I'm, you know, working here in Georgia um, at the U.S. Embassy, but my first assignment was in South Korea, in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people today, they look at Korea as this real big success story. They, yeah. they look at the big yeah. companies, Samsung and LG. Mm -hmm. and Hyundai, they are a lot of it. But um, what's really interesting, what made me think of Korea is, Lasha, you mentioned the culture of mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Um, in South Korea, they, they talk a lot about the lack of this startup culture. Because all the companies that we just mentioned, yeah, the legacy yeah. companies that were you know, part of this 
very tight government corporation relationship, mm -hmm. yeah. this elite that was helped directly by the government, but government policies for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And so now in Korea, you're starting to see this push mm -hmm. to help small and medium you know, enterprises. You have techno parks actually pop, popping up here and there all throughout the country. So mm -hmm. um, I think uh, this culture, this idea of culture is it's an important one and one that uh, takes decades to really develop. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I guess my last question uh, is to, or my question is to you, George. So you mentioned, or actually before you got here, you played this video, um, and it's taking the case of, of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and talking about the intermediary NGOs, and it talks about a jumpstart uh, in, in Cleveland, and the guy uh, who runs Jumpstart in Cleveland, he says it's, you know, he thinks it's important to have a balance between the technical mentoring and skills teaching aspect of the incubators and the capital. And it seems like uh, Jita has a lot of the skills and such, but I'm wondering, do you also have the capital uh, tied in with the different organizations that you're working with? A very good question. Um, as, as we are a governmental agency, uh, and because the, the legal uh, regulations are not so well developed in Georgia to support the startup ecosystem, although it's, it's changing now and I'm going to tell about that as well, uh, we have, we, the only financial support that we can provide today to the startups is grants. And we but currently have... Not from the budget, right? Not yes. Just some other private no, no, sector. Not, not from the private not sector, yet. not yet. Uh, what we have now is the mini grants, as we call them. It's uh, up to 5,000 Georgian Larry, and it, it, it's uh, allocated to um, initial marketing, prototyping, or attending business events abroad. That's what we uh, release the grants for. Uh, although it's been the new initiative of, of the government of Georgia, they have allocated one million, 11 million uh, Georgian Larry to startup ecosystem development in Georgia. And out of those 11 million, 2 million will be spent as an investment into the startups, up to 100,000 Georgian Larry into, but it, it will be um, dedicated to the global potential startups. And the point of this program, this initiative is to fund uh, the startups with the global, global potential and then to train them in uh, pitching in front of the US VCs and then after three months the startups are going to be taken, sent to Silicon Valley to uh, present their ideas uh, to the US VCs. And this is how we plan to discover the global startups of Georgia. Okay, but there's nine million more that is going to be spent, uh, but not as not as investment only or not as only grants. It's going to be everything that we can do for funding the startups. As for the private capital, uh, we are trying to build. Actually, we have already started to build the angel network in Georgia, and for that, we are talking to angels abroad all over the world. We want to bring them to Georgia for, for a certain time frame. And we want to ask them to train Georgian potential investors that want to become professional angels. And uh, we expect to finalize this in uh, not more than nine months. Uh, and I hope that if we show uh, if we show a success story in the business incubator or in the program that I just mentioned, or through the grants that we provide, or through any pre-accelerator, whatever the program that there exists, if we show the success story to the people with capital in Georgia, I believe that the ecosystem will, will start as a clockwork machine and it will, it will develop and, and move forward. This is the belief that we share because we have, uh, it's a small country, everyone knows each other, successful people are very famous, and they are very generous. 
uh, and we, we, we talk to them and we offer them to join our mentor pool, the network of mentors, and they do so. We have now 60 people in the mentor pool, available for everyone on our website, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, the mentors are there, the startups are there, the capital, although small from the budget, is there. The incubators, the pre-accelerators are, are just coming up. And the only thing that is left is private capital. And this is what we're aiming. We want to we wanna make the private capital more accessible to the startups. Okay, uh, so uh, as, as for the uh, two million, right? Uh, this is the program that we run with our U.S. partners, and even the committee that will uh, check the applications uh, is is in the committee. There is no Georgian uh, member. Okay, so it's going to be fully uh, uh, revised and judged by U.S. VCs. Uh, the application will uh, start from the uh, from the middle of this month, June. Uh, not exactly sure of the date, but it will be published quite good. Trust me, from in, in every possible channel. No, I, I just want to, know, to be prepared for that. Yeah. So mid June, mid mid June. Yes, mid June. Uh, Yes, there, there, there will be very strict requirements. English language will be mandatory. By the way, this is the answer to your question. See, it, it depends on the program. For this program that I'm, I'm speaking about currently, the English language is mandatory because the aim yeah, is to take these guys to the US, US so. right? And it's global, global startups. And by global, we mean we, we're not the ones who judge if the startup is global or not. They are the ones who, who judge. Um, and according uh, regarding mentors, the mentors. It's the mentor pool is available on our website, gita.gov.g. There, there's a small, uh, there's there's a an option in the menu called mentors. It's in Georgian. You can see it. There's around 60 people that uh, you can meet. There's a, a simple, very simple application that you need to fill out and your mentor will be notified that you want to meet them and then we will organize a meeting for you. George, I, I just want to add. Uh, um, unfortunately, I don't know a lot of startups in Georgia which are prepared for this international grant and that's reality. That's why we as a Blender and uh, Gita and other organization, uh, we are organizing a lot of events for you guys. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there's only few uh, person who uh, systematically are um, attended and uh, learning from our events. And Mika is one of them, definitely. Is one of them, definitely. Uh, I think you should be prepared and you should take our experience, for example, uh, me and George, we was accelerated in Dubai and with one more uh, Georgian startup uh, called Ungal and in what this work is Oh, on, on Saturday. On Saturday, uh, 2 p.m. 2 uh, 2 30, okay. Where? In, in Tech Park. Uh, we'll try to share our knowledge about how to pitch your idea, me and George. And uh, that's great opportunity and don't lose, please, and be huh? Yep. Yeah. And you can follow GTS uh, Facebook page and Blender's uh, Facebook page also because we are sharing a lot of events uh, in Tbilisi, not only our personal events, uh, any events 
uh, which is related to startup ecosystem and environment. And please be prepared because it's not easy, uh, believe me, it's not easy to prepare some international pitch. Uh, in case of great idea, you anyway need some great pitch to present your idea because you have only five, maximum five minutes and to explain what's your idea, what's the problem, what's the solution, uh, your team, and etc. and etc. You have only five minutes and this uh, needs a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge and you should so, learn. Uh, and I, I have to interrupt here. Uh, I know that a lot of you are very interested, especially those guys' experiences are invaluable. No, well, at least in Georgia. Uh, not but only, please. At, I said at least. No, I, I didn't say not only. And at least in Georgia. But um, our time is uh, still running short. So let's try and keep it uh, regarding to the pre-accelerator, accelerator thing. Uh, if you want to follow up with any other questions or regarding any of them, uh, we can. They are on Facebook and they are in the group. And if not, they can provide their uh, contact information. So uh, let's try to keep it more to, uh, close to our subject. So one thing that I wanted to mention is that um, uh, I have I have watched a few more videos uh, and believe me, even in Cleveland, and it was uh, mentioned here as well. It takes a lot of time. So it's not a magic button that you can just switch on and next day there are a lot of startups, a lot of IPOs, a lot of uh, employees and the unemployment rate doesn't go down right that way. It takes decades, not, in, not only even one, it takes decades of uh, strong pressure. You cannot just go lightweight that, oh maybe it will go up and only Gita, if, if only Gita takes part it, doesn't, it won't be a success. We all have to be very patient, and we all have to try as hard as possible to make this ecosystem better. Even in Japan in the 60s, they were, uh, Japanese technology was deemed as very use, useless and uh, very faulty. And South Korea was, uh, as you mentioned, not an environment where you thought you would go for starting a business. But it takes time and a lot of the determination, and that is one of the main challenges that especially government face and especially donor organizations face like they want uh, they are not waiting success after a year or two but waiting for like 10 and 20 years is a bit challenging and there is a donor study that is mentioned in the video so what i want to say to you guys it takes a lot of time even starting your own startup won't happen overnight it takes a lot of time a lot of patience and especially a lot of failure. You want to, very few of you will be very successful at the beginning, but most of you will uh, fail often and please try to fail as soon as possible so you will learn as much as possible. So this is one takeaway message that please do not expect to happen some magic overnight. And another topic that I wanted to mention is that uh, I want to introduce uh, you, Georgi. Georgi is a representative from Gita. And um, as I mentioned that, uh, previously, um, like our meetups doesn't guarantee that um, there will be some uh, critic actually uh, um, holding our meetups next uh, Wednesday. But it means that they are watching and keeping pulse on the society and on startups. And they try to incorporate as much as possible uh, because still uh, government is uh, a bureaucracy and it cannot change overnight but this is our um, we are trying to show them what, how, what we feel, how we feel and what are our challenges that we see so I think it is valuable to them to know uh, our, point, our perspective, our point of view so I hope they can uh, incorporate it in their big strategy uh, not only in document but uh, in real life as well. So if you have any other questions regarding to zoom out, to uh, accelerators, to social entrepreneurship or NGOs, please feel free to ask. If not, we can take a break and get ready for workshop. Is it 
that um, can be seen in international uh, investors and local investors, Georgian uh, investors. And I mean, there's a key aspect that, uh, for example, Georgian looks and gives it uh, a bit more importance than, for example, international and vice versa. Okay, uh, first of all, the main difference between Georgian and foreign investors, and, and by foreign I mean U.S. Yeah, investors, or, okay. uh, the main difference is that Georgian investors are worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, you know, guys, it takes uh, practice and it takes failures, right? We know as the startups and investors are the same pair people, right? They are not from another planet. So they need some time to accommodate to this investment in startup, in high risky uh, companies. So it's not very easy from them because they were, well, mostly, hopefully a lot of them earn it in a hard way and honest way. And so they are, uh, they, they don't, they are not ready to um, uh, yes. Say goodbye to the debt, a lot of money, like very easily, in that way. So it takes time and practice from that side, then side. Excuse me, excuse me for for a bad uh, word. I, I didn't mean that they are like bad or yes. or, or uh, All I mean is that there there's a lot that they need to learn and and uh, experience before uh, we can you know compare them uh, in, in a better way. The thing is that. Uh, as Georgian startups or any any other startups from uh, small countries, uh, except Israel, by the way, uh, they do not think global. Uh, the startups do not think global, and we have experienced this in the applications that we receive from uh, different startups. That their mindset is not global. They see the problem in their region and they try to fix this. And there's absolutely nothing bad about it. It's natural, guys see problems, they want to fix it, right? And they see problems right in front of their nose and they're not looking for the problems somewhere in the clouds. This, this is exactly what, uh, ha what happens to the investors. When they take, uh, when they put money in local startups and when they take equity, they are not looking three, four or five steps ahead. They think, I'm giving these guys money, they are working to do the job, and I'm taking 50% because there's there's two aspects. There's job and there's money. And money is mine, so I'm taking a half, right? There's also nothing bad about it. Although whenever the startup starts to think globally and when they want to get funded even more, this is when the problem comes, okay? No one wants to invest and take a piece of pie where 90% of the pie belongs to the other investor and not the founder, and that's the reality. If you if you want to if you want to get very very big, then you shouldn't give up half of your cake right away. Okay, you should wait. And this is what uh, this is what I would advise to all the all the Georgian startups that want to get funded, that want to have a lot of investment, a lot of money. Stop and, and wait for it. Don't take money. Think. How you can? I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but try to find the other way around it and try to prove that there's something you can do before you have money, mm -hmm. and then ask for more money for less equity. Mm -hmm. That's what you should do. And again, I'm saying that I know it's it's easy to say and hard to do, but if we don't start doing it, it won't happen. Right. My second question sure. is about no to me again. Okay. You have some experience, right, in um, seeing people and their ideas and their pitching and their modules and everything. What are the main um, how to say, like, pitfalls or mistakes that you can see that it's uh, almost everybody has it? For example, like uh, even what you said, right, right, that they are thinking all locally and not thinking in the long term that they should go global. What are some other even? You mean like education based on problems that can be solved? Not everybody, but basically most part. Uh, there is a lot of uh, mistakes, um, but 
Uh, first one is a uh, big team with 10 person, 10 business guy without tech guy, for example. And because they are at the same classroom, for example. And exactly. Just for it's for, for so it's not good when uh, someone sees 10 people. It's not good. It's bad for small company as startup. Three is maximum, and that's recommended. Uh, second one is uh, table presentation, pitching, uh, with black background, with black color fonts, and etc. With uh, animation. yeah, with animations and without story and without financials, research, and etc. Uh, and there is also two mistake. Uh, first one is I don't want to tell or share my idea. That's the problem. Because <laughs> uh, someone stole this idea and it's a problem. Because I have great idea. For example, uh, I want to build pyramids in PVC and we and this Egyptian stole your idea and built No, 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 we can build today because there is a lot of tourists and we can generate a uh, lot of money and you can steal this idea and build, but uh, no, no one wants to steal this idea, I'm sure, because it's all about execution, it's not about idea. Uh, it's hardest part of startup is execution, and that's why no one wants to stole your trust and your idea. And last one is um, I have no competitors. It's my favorite one. Because, uh, and, and we are here, by the way. Uh, is this your idea unique? No. Oh, so why you are doing seven? And that's Georgian so, stereotype. And that's can, I, can I add? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, this question is more of topic than I was before. So, Please keep it more the topic, and because it's already half past. How much time you use Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For uh, other questions. What, one of the most common mistakes as well is that uh, is that people do not want to listen to others, and they think they have thought so much about their product and their, their idea that they think they are experts in that, and they don't want to listen to other people, which is which is very bad. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's good to take in consideration everyone's ideas or everyone's recommendations. No, of course. But you should listen. You should listen because maybe you're missing out something very important. Uh, even, even the guy that looks the least competent in what you're doing can give you the best uh, recommendation or advice by just taking it personal and giving their personal opinion. So. We should, we should listen to each other and we should listen to other people. This is the common mistake. And, and one of the common mistakes that Lasha mentioned is people, startups, do not want to share their ideas. They do not want to talk about what they're thinking. This is very bad. Because if you don't share, you don't get feedback. And if you don't get feedback again, we, we go back to the first, we go back to the first, first mistake. We need to talk, we need to get feedback. And this is when we develop our ideas the best. Okay, so do you have any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Actually, coming from a pre accelerator and to the accelerator. Actually, what should we expect from the advisement in the technical part, advisement in the business part, or just connection to the sum investment? What actually pre accelerator and accelerator does? Okay, uh, they don't do your startup. <laughs> That's right. Because a lot of people have, have expectations that Accelerator uh, do finance, financial part for startups or uh, develop some uh, branding or logotype or find some technical guys. Not. Uh, that's only about, in case of Accelerator, it's, on, uh, it's about some small amount of money, first of all. It's about mentoring. Mentoring, I mean teaching how to pitch, how to calculate financials, only teaching. Yes, everything, but... Psychological 
not psychological, it's practical trainings about how to build your startup. And also, uh, it's about trainings, it's about mentorship, it's about find mentors, because, for example, uh, Jita has a list of mentors. And at this part, it's about networking, but uh, Accelerator won't find some technical guys or your team members, and it's not the right way. You should do on yourself. But what can you expect from accelerators yeah. and what can you expect from pre-accelerators? So what is the ah, result? Okay, between accelerators and pre-accelerators. Yes. So from accelerator and from pre-accelerator. So where does pre-accelerator take you from where to where? And where the does... The question is that why I should come to you? What, what I should expect? Okay. You, you should pitch now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of aspects. Uh, in Accelerator, there's people who already have some experience. For example, how to build your team. Uh, you cannot imagine what, what problems you probably in future uh, expect. And for example, in Accelerator, we help people to build the right team. And people help people uh, with advice and how to build this team. For example, how to uh, generate idea. Because sometimes we have a lot of ideas, you know, about that. And uh, most of the time we don't know how to choose the uh, right one, how to validate this idea, how to change and build next step of this idea. So it's also part of pre accelerator find the right team and generate the right team, generate idea, validate this idea, and um, start working uh, on, prototype, on prototype. And, and hopefully connect you to the USS on demo day. Finally, yes, but before that, to prepare some cool uh, pitch presentation of your startup idea. So, do yeah. they help you with the mentoring financial part, accounting part? Of course. It also depends if yeah, this depends is the good, good pre-accelerator, yeah, good course, accelerator, they do, and... Uh, what, what, what should you expect generally? So you should expect okay, general parts are idea, first of all, team, financials, researchers, uh, and of market size, of your target market, who is your uh, early adapters, who is... There is a lot to uh, talk, and I cannot just uh, compress this yeah, whole just, idea uh, of pre-accelerators in yeah. one sentence. And I don't know how yeah. to generalize. I, I, will try to, I will try to tell you in, in very general. Yeah. Uh, the accelerator, well, they, they differ, okay? There are thousands of types of accelerators, and every one of them has, has their own goal. But in general, the accelerator is to take a startup from a, from a certain point to another. But the process, in the process, the startup or the innovator, or the founder of a startup, they learn a lot of things about a lot of topics that can be used to develop their business. And as Lasha already told you, it might be uh, branding, initial marketing, digital marketing, uh, hardware uh, development, software development, the mentors, the experienced people from e every, every field of study, they come together to teach you whatever you need to uh, develop. And the most important part of it, of course, is funding. Okay, The accelerator helps you to raise money. This is what accelerator actually does. And how they help you to raise money is they teach you how to approach the investor. But when you approach investor, you should know something, right? You should already know something. And this something also comes with the accelerator. They, they help you realize what your business is and how to approach it. And the pre-accelerator is very simple. The pre-accelerator just prepares you for the accelerator. Okay? The pre-accelerator teaches you what... As, as a person. As a person. No, not for the investor, no. The pre Inventor? Of, in, of course, uh, as a person, as, as an inventor, as, as a founder, as an innovator, just you, okay? You, you, so you go to the pre-accelerator and you don't know anything about startups. 
you just have an idea to make the world better. And then you go to the pre-accelerator and when you come out of there, you know exactly how to make the world better. What, what to think, and in what direction to think, and what institution to approach, and you know that that is an accelerator or an incubator, and so on. And what is investor, how you can get money, how you can, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. I would say that this kind of an MBA, but in startup time yeah. so it's not for business. No, it's very difficult. I'm it's, sorry. Yeah, it's MBA for startups. How? What is it? Is it one on one? Yeah, so good. Uh, another thing that I want to add about pre-accelerators and accelerators and and the incubators and all these meetups and meetings, uh, the purpose for me uh, of this is. Uh, some of you, I, as I already mentioned, I see a lot of familiar faces here, and uh, I have seen these people a lot on other meetups, other events, some of them in our business incubator, and, and I'm very uh, happy to see you here. Uh, it's very important to attend all these meetings, not because, not only because we learn something new every time, and not only because we uh, get to know each other, uh, useful connections. And that's that is the point. But it's, I'm I'm saying it's not only, and not only because someone that, for example, you and me, we didn't know each other, and I'm sure that when we finish, we're going to shake hand and we're going to know each other, and it's amazing. But this is not the point. The point is when you are here you, with all all the other people, and when we speak about these topics and when we talk about what is an accelerator as if we knew it right and when we say what is is startup ecosystem and we try to teach each other something this in this very moment we realize and and we uh, we make the idea inside us stronger that we want to do something and we want to change something and we are in the right place to do it and when we talk and when we share, this is when we realize if we really want to follow this, this path in life or not. not. Because it's, it's very important, it's crucial to understand that a life of uh, a startup differs from a life of the corporate uh, worker. A lot. There's less stability because you don't, you don't, get, uh, you don't get your salary every month. And it's, it's less... Um, it's less stable and balanced environment, basically. Because you have to struggle. You are alone, you need to find a team member. You have an idea, you have to follow it. No one believes in you, and you have to make some people with money that don't care believe in you and give you money, right? It's very difficult. And we need to support each other in that. Not only by teaching each other something useful, but also by telling each other that we are here and we share each other's beliefs and this helped me a lot personally. Uh, now I'm, I'm sharing something from my personal experience, and I'm sorry if I'm very, uh, very long. I just want to say that uh, I spent uh, two, two and a half years uh, abroad uh, in, a, in a country that I didn't know before. I mean, I, I, I hadn't been there before, and I was uh, not alone there. I had a, my Georgian partner, my friend, uh, but it is very, very difficult to face uh, people of different thought because I, I was not a startup at that time. I was not an entrepreneur. I didn't know anything about it. I just went there, and the people that I met, the investors, the mentors, and the partners, or whoever I met, they expected something from me. They expected that I knew all this. And, and I tried, to, tried to, to act like I did, but that is exactly when I learned it. So act like you act like you know it, because there's nothing really special about it. Act like you know it and try to learn more, but don't say that you know it. Don't tell other people that you know it and you don't want to listen to them. Don't say it. Just let people talk, listen to them, and you also share something with them. And this is when this this, this is why why meetups and and accelerators and incubators and all these programs are very helpful with. They let you communicate, network, and increase the belief in yourself. Okay? Thank you.